Welcome. In this quick video, we're going to explain how to set up your PX4 PAPR and also your T-Link 12-Act respirator. So first of all, we've got the PX4 PAPR system. We've also got the charger with the cable. Now to set up that charger, you want to get your power adapter. Make sure you plug that in at the back. And then plug that power out, uh, charger into the power outlet in a clean environment. Then you want to get your battery. And before you start to use that battery, you want to make sure that it's fully charged. So put it on the charger for at least three hours before use. So to put it on the charger, you want to get it located on one end, and then that presses and clips into position. So ensure that battery is fully charged before we start. Continuing to set up our PX4, we've got two different types of filters here. Firstly, we've got our main HEPA filter. Now that's just a HEPA. It's not going to be filtering out any odors or anything like that, just anything particular. Then we've also got our pre-filter, which is going to get installed on the front of the PAPR. We've then also got a flow meter to, the, to use to check the flow coming through that PAPR to ensure we've got the right amount of air coming into our hood. So starting out, first of all we're going to install our main HEPA filter. On the side of the PAPR there's a large green button. We're going to press that and that will open the main door to that PAPR. Once we're inside, we can then locate the two tabs down the bottom and if you press with your thumbs, you can release the pre-filter door off the main housing. Then we can attach the pre-filter to the green door, then reattach the green door to the main filter housing door. Then we can get the main HEPA filter and if you notice the arrows on the HEPA filter are pointing downwards and so are the arrows on the door. Once we get that lined up we can then just sandwich the two together and then locate it back into the main PX4. You've got two tabs on the side that need to locate into the hinge side. So we're going to get those located and then the other side we can then just clip back into position. So once our battery is fully charged, to release it from the charger you need to press in on the green button and lift up at the same time. That will release that battery from the charger. You can then get the battery. We want to locate it into the hinge side and keep it out on an angle so that it locates easily. And you'll be able to see this edge here lining up with the inner edge of the battery. As that lines up, you can just clip that into position. One point to note as well with the battery when removing it, Again, you've got to press in on that green button and lift up at the same time. Now testing it for flow, what you're going to do is get that flow meter. You're going to insert that into the top of the PX4. You can then turn that PX4 on and allow air to flow through, causing that ball to float above that minimum line. You may need to wait a moment for it to stabilise. Once it's stabilised and it's above the line, you know that your filters are clean and you've got enough airflow coming through. Once you've done the test, you can then remove the flow meter from the PX4. On the side of the unit is the on-off button. So pressing and holding that is going to turn the unit on. 
you've then got lights indicating your battery life at the top, which is the green lights. You've also got blue lights at the bottom, which are indicating your fan speed. And just pressing that button will increase the fan speed. Now using this on a fan speed one is going to maximize the life of that battery and you'll get more like six to eight hours battery life out of that. To turn the unit off, we can just press and hold that. The unit is also going to alarm and vibrate once the battery gets to a point where it needs to be charged. So it's important that when you're not using it, just make sure that that battery is back on the charger to ensure that that battery is charged at all times. So that's the PX4. Then we go to the T-Link. First of all, once you've pulled it out of the box, you'll notice that the T-Link has a series of collars on it. You've got an outer collar and also an inner collar that can tuck into a gown, scrubs or a tiking suit. You've also got on the inner part of the respirator a black soft cotton material that's designed to fit snug around your neck, keeping a positive pressure inside the respirator. You've also got a cinch on the front that you can use to tighten that, not so that you're strangling yourself, but just so that you've got a positive pressure within the respirator and no big gaps around your neck. To remove the Tyvek hood from the T-Link, we want to come up to the side and we can locate the clip on the inner part of that T-Link and you can kind of see the outer shape of that through that Tyken material. So we want to get to the back portion of that clip, lift it up to remove it from the T-Link. Once you've got those clips unclipped, the T-Link frame will be able to be removed from the inside of the Tyking hood. With the T-Link, there's a few things to point out on this. First of all, on the inside you have a ratchet adjustment to ensure that the frame fits snug on your head. Once you've got it on your head, you can use that adjustment to ensure that it's fitting right. At the front of the T-Link, there's also an adjustable vent that you can use to channel the direction of the airflow once you've got the helmet on and once you've got airflow coming inside. This will enable the air to flow either more over the visor or more over your face depending on where you need it to be most comfortable. Now to put the Tykem hood back on, you want to make sure you've got the visor to the front of the T-Link. Then we can slip the hood over the top of that T-Link and get it up inside. Once we've got it up inside, we can then get the clips and ensure that that T-Link is clipped into position. And if you need to find a more detailed video on how to do the clips, there will be another video available for that. So once we've got that clipped on in position, we're then ready to go to start setting up that T-Link. You'll notice that the breathing tube has a threaded end and also a bayonet end. The threaded end is what goes inside the T-Link. So get that lined up, get that breathing tube threaded in. You want to make sure that that's done up snug. That way it's not going to allow for any contaminants to enter into the hood. Once you've got that attached to the T-Link hood, we can then attach it to the PX4. Again, this is a bayonet style fitting, so we want to press that in and twist it to lock it into position. So once you've got the PX4 connected with the T-Link, we can then turn the PX4 on. This will ensure that air is flowing through the T-Link while you're putting that system on. Once that's turned on, we can then undo the belt and put that PX4 around your waist. Clip that belt together and adjust it so that it's snug. 
and not allowing that PX4 to slip down off your back. You can then get the T-link. You want to open the flaps up here and find our black cotton bib, which once we've found that, we're going to hold that while we put that T-link on. We then want to make sure that our flaps are down in position. We can come up underneath and adjust the head suspension as needed to ensure that that fits snug on your head. Now to take the T-link off, you want to lift it up and away, ensuring that no contaminants can get inside the breathing zone. Then you can remove the breathing tube. And now that T-link is ready for cleaning and decontamination. For cleaning and replacement of the Tarkem hood, you wanted to talk with your infectious control department to ensure you're following the proper guidelines. Inside the T-Link, we've got a replaceable or machine washable padding system. So the top pad can be removed, just simply un from the hood. And that can either be machine washed or replaced. Then to put it back in, just line up the pad to the Velcro dots and ensure that that's snug in position. There's also a replaceable brow pad, which again can just be un and replaced or machine washed if needed. The interior of this can also be wiped down. And again, you want to talk with your infectious control department to determine the best method for that. If you are having to share respirators, which is something that we as a respirator manufacturer don't recommend, but if you're having to share them, you want to make sure you're wearing a hairnet or a do-rag or something else to provide a hygienic barrier between the operator and the T-Link. A few things on the PX4, it cannot be submerged for cleaning, it can only be wiped down and we recommend that you talk with your infectious control department to determine the best method for cleaning that. When you're cleaning this you want to make sure you're avoiding getting moisture on the battery terminals. That way you're not going to cause that battery to short out. There is a safety setting in there that if it does short out it will deactivate that battery and to reactivate that battery you're going to have to put it back on the charger to reset it.